Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Rails helpers. So there's lots of different kinds of helpers that Rails has built in so we, you know, can do things easier <laughs> by, do you remember it was a convention over configuration, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of spending all this time to configure stuff, we can just use what someone else has already made. So here we have this example app that we're going to play with today during the lesson. And then I will uh, post the changes up as a pull request. So we're going to clone it down. We have our Rails um, app here, and what, would you, what do we do now? Mm, you could check out a branch. I guess I will. And then what? We bundle install, right? Okay. What are you going to do the time stack? Time stack? Oh, it's already set up in oh. here. Um, in here, yeah. <laughs> Because this isn't a Rails new. This is a, someone did Rails new a long time ago and we just cloned into it. Oh, okay. Okay. So now let's see what's inside. So this is our standard Rails app here. We have um, not everything in app. So what else were we playing with besides stuff in apps? Database. And config. What's in config? routes yes there's a lot of stuff in here you'll rarely ever touch um i won't say never but almost never uh so we we've done a lot of routes someone already wrote these for us right um let me try and get it prettier and let's see there's one Rails helper that is really useful. Um, we're going to type in bundle exec Rails routes. And you can ignore these errors. They're not errors, they're warnings. So here, Rails prints out this um, list of routes for us. It's a little too big. So you can see here, it, it's pretty helpful. It tells us this is a controller and an action. So root, this is a prefix. So what do you think these um, prefixes do? Because we the, know. Those are the requests, like if you go to get request. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like shortcuts. So in your app, um, it, you can say manufacturer's path, like mm -hmm. underscore path, um, and that will automatically do this thing for you. That will be uh, get manufacturers. And you can see here all of these different options from our, from here. So one neat thing is in Rails, you don't, these have to be typed. These are pretty standard, right? Um, this whole CRUD um, setup is, is pretty standard. And to type it this all the time is a headache. So what Rails lets us do is we can type, I believe it's like this. Oh, and you can see that it changes. So if I delete you know, all of these, and then I run Rails routes again, we only got this one. We deleted all of those. But we have this nice helper here. And we run it again. Mm 
we see that we have something very similar, probably the same, I think, yeah, except even better organized um, that we had up there. And that one line gave us all of these routes. By saying resources manufacturer here on this line, we're saying we want manufacturer to have full CRUD capability. When we go to get manufacturers slash ID, you know, get the second manufacturer, you want to see like um, a show page of some short sort or go to a show action. You, you, don't, you don't necessarily need the page, but it'll go to the right action. We can see here that's the controller action. So the controller is manufacturer, and then the action would be, let's say, create. And then whatever you want to do in your controller, and let's look at the controller. So we have here manufacturer's controller. It's already built for us. We have def create. So whenever you have a method inside a controller, that's called a, a controller action. And you're able to create routes in your routes.rb that point to your controller. So I could say get, you know, anything, some path, right? To and my controller action. So I think it's a string and it would be like manufacturer and then the action, I could call it anything else like um, fly or yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so here, if I created a method, all of a sudden when I get this route, slash anything, it immediately executes the code inside this method, this method inside this controller because of this route. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a silly example. We won't, I won't show you it working, it does. <laughs> so these resource, this resources command is really useful. So here um, we have something we haven't seen before, this before action. Um, so before action, find manufacturer. So where else is that? Down here. It's a private method. And inside it, we have manufacturer equals manufacturer.find brand's ID. So this, this line right here, we will execute before these actions show. So it's kind of like we did this, edit, update, and destroy. So, oops, you got the point. <laughs> so instead of typing all these each time, because you need manufacturer here, you can execute that method, this method, find manufacturer before these actions. And that's a really convenient helper for you. Okay. So we talked about prefixes before, right? Um, in the route, you have the prefix. You you already know what a verb and a URI pattern and a controller action is, so it's a prefix. So when we look at the manufacturer controller, 
we have here a redirect to manufacturer's path. So when you tell, when you're in a uh, controller and you reference a prefix, and then you put underscore path after it, you, it's basically a shortcut. It's a shortcut to, oh, we can't see it here anymore. It's a shortcut to manufacturer path. Manufacturer path, get manufacturer ID. So when we executed our destroy method uh, action, it, oh, this isn't manufacturer path, it's manufacturer's path, right? That makes more sense because uh, it would probably give you an error. It would be like, if we went to manufacturer path, it would say get manufacturer ID, but we had just deleted it, right? It would be like, oh, I can't find this ID. Ideally, it'll tell you that. And the path it actually went to is manufacturer's path. And where is that? Huh. Oh, I see. So I already did resources. Hmm. So before, sorry, I was skipping ahead through the lecture. Let's see. Before we had this, right? Um, this would be how you specify a path. Comma after the two because you say to this controller action, right? After you get this path. And then you specify the prefix with as. This isn't, this is, you know, optional. So if you made your own path, say I want to join some group. To, uh, let's see, groups controller. Um, and I make my own method called join. I would say as join or join group, whatever I want. And then when I'm in the controller, I can just reference join group path. And the advantage to this is these things change. You can, you can, as you reorganize your app, you might change where things are in the URL. If you specify in your routes this as, when you write a bunch of code in your controller, instead of sending it, you know, redirect to, you know, some, some string, that's an actual explicit path. That works too, but it'll break when you change it, you know? If you have this instead, it'll be smart and it'll know where it has to go. As long as whenever you change it, you change the new strings to as the same variable, and then it'll hold on to that. That's how you can reuse it? Yes, you can reuse it by saying as, and this, path changes but the as stays the same yes mm -hmm. the hmm? so this is the route oh the routes rb so routes rb oh, uh, so oh the controller manufacturer's controller because you have many different controllers and then also different routes for each of your models. Okay, let's let's try spinning this up. How do we do that? Uh oh, what happened? Our address is already in use. 
from it here. I mean, I thought I did, but you know, my my laptop died out of power. So this is this is why we want to like exit our servers before we close terminal windows, because things like this will happen. If we close our our terminal and there's still a process running inside it, it won't it won't finish the way it was supposed to. Uh, address and use. Well, um, I've Luckily, seen this before. I would still need to Google how to fix it. Hmm. Oh, kill. Okay, so I need to use this one to see which process. And it's this one. I'm going to copy this. And what do I need to do? I need to do kill, kill nine. I don't know what kill nine means, but it's worked for me before. Kill nine, three, seven, seven, oops. Okay, now I'm gonna try running real server. Okay, so now we're on 3,000. Uh-oh. Home controller index is missing a template. Okay, let's look at our repository. So here's our controllers. We have a home controller. Def index. So there is an index. So what's the problem? I need a view. So template, when you see template, think view. So we need a home controller template of index. How will we do this? Go to views. <coughs> Right here. Yeah, make a new, a new, new file. New file. New folder. New folder. Yes. What do you think it should be called? Uh, index.erb. Not index.erb. Uh, Look at the other ones we have. So we have a manufacturer's controller, and we have a manufacturer's folder for views. So if we have a home controller, what would we call our folder and views? Home, right? Home, yeah. That's good. So this is one of those um, convention over configuration things. Someone already told the app where to find all the files that you're going to create, you know, because you don't want to make everything one big file. It would be impossible to read. And because of the way you name the folders, and the way you name the controllers and the models and everything, it knows where to look. They call it automagically because you don't know how it's working. It just works. But you do have to make sure you're naming things the way that they're named elsewhere. So here in manufacturers, we see how things are named in manufacturer. So in home, what will we make? Index.erb. Yep. Oops. Uh, sometimes I type enter too fast and then I miss the last letter. Okay. So index.erb. This is the home page. And when we go back to our app, this error shouldn't be here anymore. Okay, so we got rid of that error. And what do we want to do next? Um, oh, so when we were looking at the redirect to the path, there's another nice Rails helper. 
So here in update, we have redirect to this instance variable of manufacturer. Do we remember where this comes from? Uh, do before. Yeah, the do before, the before action. Before action. We found the manufacturer. And so we have access to this manufacturer. And we can just redirect to this. And it knows when we're saying this, it's the same thing as saying this. And it's the same thing as saying, you know, manufacturers slash one or two or whatever. And then you'd have to interpolate it, right? And, and do all this stuff to something like that, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't, we don't have to do that. All we need is the manufacturer. Yeah. And then it knows where, what we mean. So let's see, let's see how it works. I'm just going to go all the way back. So I'm going to go to slash manufacturers and see what we have built out for us. Oh, I already made stuff. Oh, that's not appropriate. All right. So we are able to make a new manufacturer. And you guys built something like this yesterday, right? So this isn't, isn't new for you. Um, you saw from all the stuff I typed in that it works. Uh, I'm going to destroy the inappropriate ones. Okay. So we have this here. One thing I showed some of you yesterday is there's a really useful thing in Rails that's Rails server. I mean, a Rails console. Oh, this must have been where my other server was. It was hidden. Oh, OK. So uh, if I go into Rails console, I'm in this magical land where um, all the controllers and remember the controller is like the brain of your app right and there's there's something called application controller and anything you type in here will apply to every controller you can see that home controller inherits from application controller manufacturer controller also inherits here and you can kind of imagine when you're in your console that you're inside application controller. And it's kind of like you already went to a path. So if it was like get something and you go to a controller action and you're right here, this is where you are in the console. And if you want to know like, Oh, I want to be able to get, I don't know, the number, the total number of manufacturers, right? You could just randomly type in here, but a better place to randomly type would be here. I could, I have access to all my models. So manufacturer, error, have this array. Remember when we looked at uh, class methods and we made an all method that get, returned an array of all the instances? Like if you read from a CSV and you made instances of, of each entry in the CSV and you put it in an array, that's exactly what this is. So you have an array of instances. So if you say the first one, you have this manufacturer, ID one, Name, Apple, description, iPod. Um, and let's say I want to say, I want to count them. OK, so I have four. So now I know this is the line I need in my controller. 
if I wanted to make some action to say, that's how I would write a line in my controller. Through this console, you're able to access your database, not only read, but you can also write. So the same way that we make, how would we write uh, to the database? Let's say I wanted to change the name of this, the first manufacturer to orange. Use the update statement. Um, so the update is the name of the action that we would go to and maybe the URI. But how would we do it once we're inside the update action? So here we said dot update, manufacturer params. So what is manufacturer params? It's like a hash saying like ID is this and this is this, right? Um, let's see if that works in our console. Let's say manufacturer.first, oh, dot all dot first. Dot first might work, but um, dot update uh, name orange. Can you see? that it went select manufacturers, you know, the SQL thing that you don't have to know anymore because Rails. And this SQL begin, SQL commit, true. And you see now that when we, in our database itself, so therefore in our views, um, it changed to orange. What is the structure in your console? Uh, yes, destructive, I mean, kind of if you use a method that actually writes to the database. So let's say I said, um, here's our first manufacturer, right? And we called an instance. And now we have m, m.name, okay? Um, let's say I said m dot, um, description. Delicious. Now we have this object. Its name is orange and its description is delicious, right? But in our view and in our database, you saw, you saw there was no SQL commands executed there. Nothing has changed. It's not quite destructive at this point. How would we actually save this? That save. At this point, we've saved it to the database, and it's changed. And everything, all of these lines that I typed, if you had typed these lines, line by line, in your controller, it would do the same thing. Here, you're kind of in a live version of your controller action. Okay, so we're gonna go, this is, this is the back end here. We're gonna go back to the front and we're gonna talk about HTML helpers. And I, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with Rails HTML helpers. They're great. Um, and they're also irritating. So sometimes I will <laughs> just write the HTML thing without the helper, but they're definitely worth, you know, using often. So here, let's see. We have, let's look at index.html.erp. And here we have this tray. I call it a tray. I don't know if it's actually a tray. Um, of the manufacturer's name, description. So this would be the pages that we're on, right? Name, description, show, edit, destroy. So 
that's the same thing here. Name, description, show, edit, destroy. So this is the page that we're on. Um, you can notice that we're using path helpers here. This is a link to. So instead of typing, you know, something like, you know, a href, you know the drill, right? And then you'd have to give it like a, a specific path with a string. And that's going to break if you change it, right? Here, we have a link to show manufacturer. So because we are using this uh, Rails helper in ERB, we can make a link to show manufacturer no matter whether that path changes or not. And it'll always go to show this manufacturer, and it'll go to the manufacturer controller um, show action. Or it will, well, it'll go through the route first, and the route will tell it where to go, right? So uh, these link twos are very helpful. Um, you've probably already done like interpolation like this. This is helpful too, right? Um, so you can, and here's the path that we were talking about. So this manufacturer is like the instance variable, like when we said redirect to. This is the same thing that was just passed through. If we look at our manufacturer's controller, index action, right? We say manufacturers equal manufacturer dot all. So it's that array that we were looking at earlier, that array full of manufacturer instances. And um, we said locals. Manufacturer is manufacturers. And what this let us do, it may or may not be necessary for in this instance, but it let us type manufacturers without this at symbol. So manufacturers dot each do manufacturer, and this is an instance. So remember, we said redirect to manufacturer, and then a new, and we didn't have to give it the helper or the path or anything. The same thing here. That's that's that instance variable. Redirect to this object. And then this is a little different. This is the path. This is the prefix we're talking about, right? When we look at our route. And those are helpers. Whenever it's worth it, when you're starting out, like whenever you want to make something, see if there's a Rails helper for it. So you don't have to write it in HTML um, and make it a little fragile, probably. So some of you yesterday asked me about partials. So what is a partial? And what's a template? Let's start with template. What's a template? View. A view. Um, we have our views here, this here is a partial, this form. Partials in the name by convention um, have a underscore in front of them. And you can reference them. Um, so here we have this form. This is a lot of code, right? Um, Yesterday, we made like some new and some uh, edit actions that were basically the same thing, right? They were the same form. Um, you probably just copied and pasted them. So if we, why type it twice when we can type it once? If we have a partial, we can call this partial file. Yeah? Go back to the previous. Home index? Uh, no, actually, Manufacturers a, index. Yes. Uh, that comma manufacturers and then a comma edit manufacturers are those the aliases uh, that you're looking for? Okay, so this is kind of like an alias. 
it's called a prefix okay. All right. and that, That's what that was in route okay. so oops oh exit this is like irb okay so um when i say and i want to see my routes That was the prefix that we were talking about. So that's the edit manufacturer. So when you want to use this magic link that does this action, instead of typing, you know, this thing and actually making like a method get and path is this, or this is the action, you tell it, oh, this is what it translates to. And this is the important part. This is where it goes. In my controller. So whenever I go to this method inside that this controller, that's where this path will go. So anytime you see paths, it's because of that route. This is a little different. This is the this would still work here because we already have manufacturer. This, well, that would be actually, in this view, we wouldn't have manufacturers. <laughs> this is, this manufacturer is this manufacturer here, right? So it's each one in this array. Having what be key? This? No, no, no. This is, this is the best name for it because um, this is manufacturers and each one is a manufacturer. Okay, um, so partials. This is what our new looks like. And this is what our edit looks like. You can see that they're almost the same page. You have a different title, you have different links, but the meat of it, the form is the same form. You notice there's no underscore here. It knows where to look when you say this syntax, render form. It goes, okay, I'll render this. With what local variables? This one. So you go to the form.
Sorry, I lost power. <laughs> we'll be back at 55.